All right, well, thanks for that introduction. I think it helped Kevin uh, tune into the frequency here in the room. So Kevin Coleman is with us today for the first time. We're delighted to have him here. He is the, he's an empowerment speaker at KMC Empowerment, where he helps individuals and corporations believe and inspire to be goal-driven in pursuit of excellence. In order to do this, KMC Empowerment provides empowering speeches, training, and coaching to help organizations and individuals succeed. Their goal is to provide you with practical concepts to propel you forward to the next level. Their vision is to be a leading empowerment speaking organization, helping individuals and corporations achieve their full potential. In order to do this, they pay attention to details, with providing clear and concise concepts, and developing smart goals to be applied and demonstrated for all customers. Kevin's prior experience includes being a motivational speaker, and he's also an analyst at the GSA. His undergraduate work was in management information systems at Strayer University. Please join me in welcoming Kevin. Thank you. Thank you all. Do mine. He already gave my introduction. Yeah. All right. He gave my introduction, but I gotta give you my three words. But my three words are a little different than yours. I need you to say and repeat them after me, okay? Inspire. 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 Motivate. 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 Lead. 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 That's what we do at KMC and Proper. We inspire individuals, groups, with personal development trainings, empowerment speeches. I like to call them empowerment speeches. And also we all motivate individuals through coaching. <coughs> You know, we talk about the individuals, try to get to know them better, and try to find things within their personal and professional development to try to help build them up, have them have better character, have better working relationship with the people that they work with at their jobs. That's what we do at coaching. And then we also teach leaders how to lead with excellence through trainings like this. Because this training we're going to focus on today has to do with communication and connection. It's a little different. With a lot of things that you said, a lot of you had a various different things you talked about, and you were talking about different things about communicating. But we're gonna go a little deeper than that. Because when you're out there for a job, if you're in college, if you're in high school, if you're a professional, if you don't have a, if you work for a government agency, wherever you are, you have to know the skill of connection, even more than communication. But we're gonna do a quick exercise before we get into that. And for those, anybody play sports in here? Oh, okay, so I'm gonna start with you. He caught it. Okay, what I want you to do, this ball is gonna go around to everyone. You don't necessarily have to catch it. Okay, you don't necessarily have to catch it. You can pass it to you. But nonetheless, I want everybody to put their hand on that ball. Just toss it up in the air, catch it. And with your right thumb, wherever it lands, I want you to look at that word that's on there, and you tell me how, what it means to you and how it works with you and within your personal life. If, it's, if it is uh, a speaking in groups, tell me how does that affect you as far as speaking in groups. Let's go, you go first. Hold up, yeah, let's go to the store, toss it up. Catch it. No, catch it, you gotta catch it with your thumb. Yeah. Wherever your thumb lands, your right thumb lands. Uh -huh. You gotta catch it with your hand. Yeah. Where you're right. you catch it with your thumb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay. Just trying to you. Okay. Uh, what does it say? Politically disagree. Politically, okay, now what does that mean to you? In communication. Well, when it comes to uh, politically, does it mean it mean I can have a conversation with you about whatever subject we're talking about politically, white right? house, whatever we're talking about? I don't have to tear you down or rip you apart and tell you that you're wrong, but I can just say my opinion is, and I can say that um, I may not, um, we may not agree on this, but we both. Do have strong opinions about what we believe in. You may disagree, but you're not being disagreeable. Right. All right. Let's go ahead. So let's go to the next person next to you, and we're just gonna go around. Just toss up your hands. <laughs> I like to toss. There we go. Where are you Right thumb. Take notes. Take notes. That's good. That's one's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. Right. So how? So what it means to you as far as communication? Uh, taking note of what somebody else is saying or what they're doing. Okay. That's good. That's good. Let's go to the next person. Just toss it up your hand just a little, just a little night light. There you go. Now wherever your right thumb is, just talk about that and how it affects you with the communication. Get the big picture, then the details. Get the big picture, then the details. How does that affect communication in your personal opinion? If I don't get somebody's attention from the get-go, and they're not really interested in the details. If I'm a banker and I've managed millions of dollars, 
of other people's money, that's a big picture. Mm -hmm. How I managed it and with the uh, additional detailed information in the resume, but to put that first in the resume is eye-catching and it's definitely the big picture. Great job. Black News Talks, there you go. Appreciate criticism. Okay, so what that means to you in regards to communication? Appreciate criticism. Mm -hmm. um, appreciate how uh, someone else looks at you in a different light than what you may have looked at. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually, by listening to their tone or what they may be saying, determine whether or not you feel it's in a negative light or a positive light. But again, it all depends on how you internalize it. Yes. So, even if it may not sound correctly, you can actually change that to a positive before prior, prior to in, uh, internalizing it. I love the way you think. Even when you stood up and said something positive like that, I love that. Listen for what's unsaid. Um, ah, that thing. is, um, I am really focused on like how people are communicating to me. If they're standing close, if they're standing far away, I use my hands a lot. Um, you can just get a sense of, of people from listening and you know finding about who you know who they are. A lot of times, you'll see that connection. <coughs> that. Right. It's awesome. I know you can do it. Ooh. Right now. Uh, we got to get the big pictures and the details again. Okay, let's try it again. Try it again. <laughs> try it again. Try it again. Shut up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean to you in regards to communication? Um, well, part of you know, some part I communicate as, as, a, as an instructor all the time. I'm trying my best to figure out what is best for the students. And it's often, it's often best for me to, after I put something out there, is to wait and see what they have to say, how it impacts them, rather than filling the, 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 the dead air time like I'm on a radio station. Mm -hmm. Good, great, great answer. Next. Caroline, did you want to help? You're welcome, he threw it to her. <laughs> That's good. Multitask during conversation. Okay. How does that affect communication in your opinion? I don't think it helps. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. I think I think people like to feel respected and I don't think that they really can do that unless they feel like they have my attention when they're good. talking. Great answer. Uh, Young lady behind, would you like to just toss it up? She didn't like that one. No, oh, 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 oh. advertising. <laughs> oh, ask them to repeat until you understand. And um, that's valuable in communication because uh, it helps them to know that you are listening and uh, listening to understand and not listening to respond. Yeah. And so it helps them to know, and it helps you, that if you don't get it right the first time, to clarify the message until you can walk away with exactly what it is the person is saying. How about you? Who's next? Sure. <laughs> you almost I'm, sorry, it. He's no, okay. I'm trying to get you guys that. That's fine. We're doing great. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's good. Good. All right. If you get so, something someone else got, just go ahead. You can still do it. Don't worry about it. Okay. I got shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what that means to me is basically while somebody is talking, don't open your mouth. Don't try to interject your own thoughts or opinions. Just keep your mouth shut and just listen to what the other person has to say. That's empowering for you, for you and for the other person. Exactly. All right, well, you need to come up this way, I guess. Anybody else need to go on this side? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, I have listened for what's unsaid again. I, I think um, for me that does have a lot to do with, um, as somebody up there said, body language and 
um, but I think what's unsaid is um, it's also I think really important to try to provide an environment where it doesn't have to be unsaid anymore. So. And hey, wait a minute. Not only was that a that was a good pass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right thumb, right? Yes. Oh, that's an um that's an eighty yeah. Just politely disagree. Um okay, so what does that mean? So okay, in college, you know, um when you take like especially like big lecture classes and like philosophy and stuff like that. Well I'm a communication major actually, but politely disagreeing with people's points is so important because a lot of times like people get very defensive about what they mean and in when someone says something that the person doesn't agree with it can come it can cause a conflict and that's really not what you want especially when those are like your colleagues and you never know when you might meet them so politely disagreeing it just helps me to avoid conflict um it also reduces my anxiety um so i know like oh man i got an argument with this person i'm mad at you you know yeah. stuff like that so great great job Lee? Listen for what's on said. Should I do that one? Or? Maybe. Sure. If you like, you can go again. You can go again. Yes. What does that mean to you? Um. It's uh, you know, I work in an environment where emotion is uh, very much a part of it. I, you know, I'm working with people with special needs and. People who don't have special needs, we all, it can be very emotional. Um, and sometimes you want to fix things, especially when you're kind of in charge or you're the instructor or the leader. And sometimes people just need to vent. You need to allow that process to happen. Because actually after they vent, then, then, then you get more information and you can actually fix something better once you kind of have let them vent. And, I know I certainly appreciate when people let me vent yeah. and don't necessarily try to fix it right away because I just need to get some stuff off my chest. Yeah. Good job. You guys like football, mm -hmm. right? So celebrate or sympathize accordingly. All right. Um, celebrate. Um, yeah, so, so someone, someone's, something would happen to them. Uh, you get a, Enter in. Don't resent the fact that well, you got it, I didn't. And it yeah, just ba basically, uh, you know, enter into that person's world for for a few moments to uh, to understand what they're experiencing and participate. Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right, same thing. Celebrate. Talk to them. This one is take notes. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, rush the conversation. <laughs> How did I speak to you? Well, that, that, um, I guess it means to get to the point. Um, if we're in a, in a discussion and you want to try to come to a couple of decision points, perhaps that's uh, that's uh, useful. Uh, in my in my line of work, I see perhaps um, more in in uh, organizational development and those types of things. Um, it's probably, uh, again, trying to get to the point where there's an action term, an action to do instead of, yeah, well, along with the back and forth, which is important to develop the conversation, but, but uh, also, I suppose, but I don't know if I like rushing the conversation. I'm glad. What color is that? Purple. That's purple. It's bad. That's not good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. I understand where you're coming from, yeah. from an aspect of you're trying to get action items. That's what you're yeah. trying to do. Let's hear those key words that I know we can take action on immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're going to talk about here, about many different things we've talked about, but we're going to talk about actionable items. Mm -hmm. Not only talking about communication and connection, we're going to talk about how can we put all these different things that we've discussed into action, apply them to your life. That's where you'll learn. Mm -hmm. But with that one in particular, if you rush that conversation, you lost connection. You're no longer connecting with them any longer. You're communicating, mm -hmm. but that's not a, a positive communication. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. I like that. See how you come from one hand to the other? He's a juggler. I was asked them to repeat, to understand, um, 
So I'll do that one. Okay, that's what, what that means to me is, well, I've been in consulting, kind of client engagement for many, many years. So but what that means to me is that you do want to always listen, hear what they have to say, um, and then it helps to play it back as well. So kind of paraphrase, okay, this is what I think I heard you say. Uh, say. And do that until you really do understand and you get some concurrence from whoever you're speaking with your audience that they, they also agree that you understand. Yes. Agree, yes. Give unwanted advice. Very. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is that one purple? I try, yeah. yeah, it's a purple. I try my best not to do that. Um, because it, I'll lose my list, I'll lose the other person if I try to give them unwanted advice. Yes. They'll just stop listening to me, and then there is no communication. That's it. The connection has been broken. Yeah. Thanks for a great answer. Mm -hmm. uh, acknowledge problems. Oh, that would be. Acknowledge problems. Acknowledge problems. Uh, what color is that one? Communication is key to understanding uh, whether the problem is from someone else or perhaps it's something that I initiated not knowing. So the communication back and forth to See, resolve. And, and when you acknowledge a problem, you can do it in a way that people can be receptive to it. And you can learn from that and grow from it. I'll take another bounce on that one. Um, say no without explanation or apology. Mm. It's purple. Yes. <laughs> so we know already. For sure. Uh, How could that break down communication? I would always want to explain if I'm saying no, I guess. I would want to explain anyway, uh, but especially if I'm saying no. So or I guess it depends on the circumstance if there's no reason for apology, but that's not my mm -hmm. mantra for connecting and conversing with somebody to exchange thoughts, at least not, uh, you know, in a positive way. Here you go. Thanks. Open my eyes. I'll take notes. You can do it again. Yeah. Maybe yeah, take notes. Yeah, although, although, you know, uh, I um, will have an interesting conversation, and this is my, my fault. I, I don't grab the name. And, you know, as an editor, there's often a chance to check an email and so on. But, but more and more, as I'm looking for work and interviewing, I really need to slow down and um, uh, repeat a name in my head, make an association with somebody I already know or some sound I like so that I'm remembering names on the spot. I mean, the, the teachers are, are excellent at doing that, so I used to learn. Mm, listen actively. Um, this applies to me in the classroom, especially when I need to learn information. I need to listen actively so I can grasp it and, you know, for tests, remember it. give unwanted advice um of course it's purple i feel like it's important not to do that because most of the time when people want advice from you especially your friends or co-workers they want they want advice that they need but like the unwanted advice is sometimes your opinions that can that you sometimes sneak in there that can kind of disconnect them from you in many different aspects. Disconnect. All right. Well, that's great. You guys can hold the ball for me. Anybody else want to go? All right, so we, we're good. But first of all, the reason why we did that exercise is for us to just get the conversation going. I love the three questions and how you felt. That was beautiful. But also I wanted us to look at it from a connection standpoint so we can lay that groundwork, so we can lay the foundation to really talk about connecting. Now first, I want to let you know that my name is Kevin Coleman again. 
I am a John Maxwell trainer, speaker, and coach. And what we're discussing today is a book by John Maxwell, which is called Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. Is everyone, a bit, uh, understand, has everyone heard of John Maxwell? Has anyone had not heard of him? Oh, really have not? You're going to learn some stuff today. You're going to learn some stuff today. But the thing I want to emphasize with this book, and this book will come into play at the end as well. It says, what the most effective people do differently. So it's not just about everyone communicates, you connect, but by you learning these principles and learning about this book, and this is only just a, a, a glimpse of it, really, what we're going over today, because I have a training, and something we're going to talk about a little later, that we, I can provide you guys, complimentary, where we can talk about this in depth in a five-week study. Anyone interested in that? A five-week study, complimentary, about this book. That's what I'm offering you today. At Career Conference? Yeah, go ahead. Um, we're How you doing today? I'm um, fine. You're gorgeous. Oh <laughs> she makes me happy just looking at her. I'm telling you. Go ahead. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I was really interested in your communication that everybody communicates, but few connect. That's right. And that is a problem with many situations you're in. Um, you're not connecting or they're not connecting with you. Uh, but the main thing about career confidence, they talk about how you need to improve the communication. All right, all right. And I think that's key. Yes, it is. And, and what you're going to do today, you're going to be my confidant. Mm -hmm. Meaning, when I go through this presentation, I'm going to look to you for some of your advice as well so you can really add more impact to this conversation, okay? And what was your name one more time? Maria. Maria. There we go. All right, it says here, if you ask me what's the one thing you can do to be successful, I'll say communicate. Similar to what Maria was talking about, right? You have to know how to communicate. You have to be very clear and concise about what you say to individuals so they can understand you and know where you're coming from. Connection increases your influence in every situation. Connecting increases your influence in every situation. And the reason why I repeat that twice, because when we talk about connecting, it's a little different. When we talk about connecting and influence, that's almost like leadership. How many of the leaders in this room right now? I'm looking around the room. I didn't see every hand up. All right, I'm missing some hands. Now, the reason why I'm looking closely and intently at the folks that didn't raise their hand, because everyone in this room is a leader. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. When we talk about influence, we talk about ethical influence, of course, because you want to see people succeed. You want to see people to reach their highest potential, and you want to do that in an ethical way. But it's all about leadership and influence. And we're going to talk a lot about that today, and I want you guys to really focus and hone in on influence. The number one criteria for advancement promotion of professionals is being able to have an ability to communicate effectively. That's important. How many people are hiring managers? Have ever been a hiring manager? Is that true? I'm asking the question. Yeah. And why would you say it's true? So one of the hiring managers in here is tell me why you, why it's important. We're making a decision. Yeah. The person can't communicate to you effectively. You don't have a lot to connect with. That's it. That's it. So it's really keen that you have to have people on board and it, even as yourself be able to communicate effectively. And it's something, I, I, I love this slide for one reason, because when we went around the room, some of you mentioned some of these things on this slide, if you recall. Five skills, qualities of successful leaders. Number one is having a vision. You have to have a vision, you have to look at things for thinking and where you want to go. Really document the process in which you want to get the right milestones down so you can make sure you meet, attain the goals that you want. And some things I look at as far as vision, you have a launching point in life, and then you have a destination point in life. And everything you do in between that launch point and that destination point is all based on your decision and your vision you have. One thing I love is to write a vision statement. What I did this year, this is something new I did as a family. As a matter of fact, I have my daughter, my kid, my wife, what we did was, we did a vision board, beginning of the year, and we set up in four quadrants, 
Well, I set mine up before. They did their own thing. They did hair and makeup, and what you know. But that's but that's my kid's vision. But my vision had four quadrants, and I think it would be very helpful. So please document this. P, I, E, S. Four quadrants. P, I, E, S. Pi. And what it means is, I looked at my physical, my intellectual, my emotional, and my spiritual. Because those things are very important to me. I know how to change my lifestyle. I'm in the process of eating better. You know, I'm doing th different things for my physical to build myself up. But also, I'm doing things intellectually. You know, I'm, I'm doing things as far as reading more books and all that kind of thing. And emotional, I, not only since I am a coach, I found myself a coach. Since I am a speaker, I found someone as a, a coaching speaker. You know, so we can do things even better so I can maximize my potential. And also, through within all of that, the PIES acronym in the four quadrants. I also looked at another four letter word. I need you guys to write this down. You don't want to miss this one. This is key. Can we go back to PIES again? What does it stand for? It is PIES. It stands for your physical, physical. intellectual, emotional, and your spiritual. Thank you. Is the next four letter word also a quadrant or is this just a No, this is the, the next four letter word has something to do throughout each one of the words, each one of the kind of quadrants. It's more. M-O-R-E, more. And you guys are really gonna love this one. Maximize opportunities with relentless enthusiasm. Maximize opportunities with relentless enthusiasm. Why that's important? Because when you have goals, you have values, you have things, a vision that you want to a, a, you know, try to, if you want to push yourself to that vision, you have to do it with a mindset of excellence and how you're going to get there. So you have to have that mindset of more. So what is R? What does R stand for? Relentless. 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 Maximize opportunities with relentless enthusiasm. So when we talk about making a transition in life, whether it's a new job, you or a promotion, or set yourself up for sex, please look at more and how you want to get there. And then also, being a pragmatic. Peter, you talk about pragmatic. Who said pragmatic? Pragmatic. Talk about that. Talk about how it affects you and why it's one of your key words. So I think for me personally and professionally, when I engage with somebody, if I'm working with somebody, um, and, and the way I, I approach my own tasks and the work that I do, um, I, I, I always look to see where um, I can kind of maximize value for myself and for someone else. And I think it, it, at the end of it, I get a lot more satisfaction and I feel like I've been successful when I take that approach. Um, like I said, for myself personally, as well as people that I've worked with and continue to work with. Great, great job. I have a comment about pragmatism. Go ahead. Because I think I, you know, of that list, I think consensus building is where I need, is my area for improvement. Consensus building to me is getting people on board with your idea and your perspective or your vision. And I don't have a problem with pragmatism, but where I get into trouble with that is, you know, the saying is, don't want to be right or don't want to be all right. Mm -hmm. So I relate pragmatism to being right. And in some environments, you have to put that aside and just be all right with folks so the consensus building can occur. Yeah. And I'm also glad you said that because as we go further into this training, you're going to see us talking about something specifically about what you said. Because even when you have a pragmatic approach to things, you still, you're still still open-minded. You may have to be focused on, okay, this is my set of values, this is where I, how, the way I think, but you're still open-minded and you can still build consensus. We're going to talk really about consensus building in there. But thank you for that. And bring us to consensus building. Something that you may be struggling with, but it's easy, something you can easily overcome through just having communication and building consensus. And I don't want to go too deep with that because we're going to talk a lot more about it in the future. But that is one of the five qualities of a successful leader. Also, there's charisma. You have to have that charisma about you. You have to be able to connect with people. You have to have that conversation with individuals and they see the value in you and you see the value in them. And the last one is a key one with any leader. Who we have up here? All presidents. You have to have trustworthiness. 
many presidents that have to have trust in worthiness to be in that the field that they're in. Next one is connecting is the ability to identify with people and relate to them in a way that increases influences with them. And that's something we talked about earlier. Leadership is what? Influence. influence. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, three components for connecting. This is key, guys. And what's up there? Where are you at right now? 40 plus. 40 plus. 40 plus. I want to make sure you guys realize the importance of being here. And the importance, that's why I, I love uh, Ken. Because the things that he, I mean, I, I don't know you that well, I love you, but I do have love for you. But, this, but my key is, he has a passion. I spoke to him about three months, this was about three months ago, maybe. I spoke to him three months ago, he told me all about 40 plus. He asked me about the various different trainings I provide, and I have a slew of them. I have some on, you know, success building and things. But nonetheless, we talked about those things, but this is the one that really connected with him. And I can tell to his passion exuded through the phone. And we had our conversation. So I knew that he, had, he really values you and anyone that comes in this room. And for 60, you say 65 years? That's powerful. That's powerful. 40 plus. Three components for connecting at 40 plus. What do you think they are? And they're very important. Attendance. All right, attendance. That's, that's, one. that's, that's one. Okay, we can go with that. But it's not on here, but we're going to go with that. Any other? Can someone think of something else? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to say listening. Intensively listening. I like what you said. It's not up there, but I love what you said. And it, it will fall into play. Let's go to the first one. People have to know you. They have to know you. I mean, and I don't mean just, hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you? And then you go on about your bit. No. Really get to know someone. And once someone knows you, the next one is this. They'll like you don't like you because they, you're authentic about what you do. You're authentic about what you say. You're authentic about how you interact with individuals. But the key one is this one. Who's, did you say the word? I didn't even put the word up. You said you muffed the word. It's no like, and trust. Those are the three key components of connecting with individuals. And that's what you have to do with 40 plus. They have to know you, have to like you, and we have to trust you. Do you guys know Ken? Absolutely. Do you like them? Yes. yes. Do you trust them? Yes. All right. So it's true. The next one is, now we're talking about a little bit of soft skills. Do you know the power of a smile? If you notice, every time I met everyone today, I, the ones I didn't get a chance to meet, what the first thing I did? Did I have a smile on my face? Yes. Because it's a power in a smile. And it's authentic. It's real. I'm not just putting on a show. This is my first. You can ask my kid. Is my first hand like this all the time? <laughs> you in trouble. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get that one right there with the feminists on that. Alright, but anyway. But the first thing we're gonna look at is the acronym. The smile. The first one is they see you. Because when you have a smile on your face, someone sees you. They they recognize you. The next one is it's magnetic. Because you build an automatic connection when you smile at someone. The I is I. I value you. You see me, I value you. The next one is, it makes you feel likable. You seem likable to individuals. And the last one is, it encourages you to continue the dialogue. It encourages you to continue the dialogue. Now I'm gonna give a little example here. You know, we go on trips, you know, we've been in New Orleans, we've been all over the place as a family. But one thing my wife and I, what we did was, we had a certain major league Every time we saw this interview, she had a big smile on her face. She was really nice. And, and she really made us feel comfortable in the hotel. So what we did was, we saw her day, you know, we were there about four days. So at the end of the hotel stay, I had to tell her, I said, who's your supervisor? I got a little know about, you know, your smile, how you really made us feel, you feel emboldened to be here, and we love it. And she said, she told us her supervisor, we put in a good word for her. All because of what? Smile. All right, how are you, as a leader, or what we've been talking about, influencer connection. Now I want participation here. We gotta get participation here. Participation here. The first one is organizational. Think about the organizations you may have been a part of in the past, or organizations you are a part of currently. Think about how are you connected. Let's get some hands. Who wants to start? I should my leadership style uh, organizing for the organizations I work for. And that's how you're connected. Yeah. Okay, that's how you're an influencer. 
All right, so she shows her leadership style, right? All right. Now, who else? Hey, go ahead, sir. Um, <coughs> um, I volunteer with putting together care packages for military people who are overseas and getting in, and uh, also hosting dinners and barbecues for their families who are left over here. But I help influence them because sometimes they just get a little down or whatever and they might have some ideas. So I just kind of get with them and just kind of just talk it through it, you know, talk uh, through it with them and just give them that encouragement to keep going. You know, don't stop if you yeah, need anything. Yeah. I can connect you with this person. You know what, somebody has this. And all of a sudden, the whole world changes. That's it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, As a paralegal in, on a three person legal team, I organized over 20,000 pieces of legal memorandum and evidence in the largest criminal trial in the history of wow. the District of Columbia. Thank you. In the rear, we got two in the rear. Okay, uh, yes, but as an influencer, I guess I consider myself uh, a motivator and a connector. So, for example, when I was in um, when I was in banking management, and also too locally with the church, that what I what I'd like to do is to go around to my peers and just get people together for a community service and um, for a community service event. If people are on the edge about whether or not they want to join us, I'll just I'll say, come on, let's do it, let's have fun, and take down people's phone numbers and just make sure that we're all on board. Good, good, good. Thank you. Um, I always like to think about what I can do for the other person, not just what I'm going to get out of okay. whatever. So in the, I, I just found I was owned a small business in a, in a um, medium-sized, uh, or I, actually I guess a large town, and it was just really nice to always feel like I could connect people and, I don't know, make a bigger community, a bigger tribe out of where uh, We're going to talk more about something you said, and I'm going to let you know about it once we get to it, okay? Anyone else on organization? All right, moving forward. Professionally, now some of you may be in between jobs or in between careers right now, but professionally, even when you think back to your previous profession, how do you feel you're an influencer? How are you connecting within your profession now? Go ahead, Peter. Um, I'll, I'll kind of wrap both of those together. So uh, I had the opportunity, I kind of created it for myself to uh, build a market segment for the federal government and Salesforce platform system integration services where it didn't exist before um, with a company that was acquired by IBM. I previously been at IBM for 10 years and this company blew up. Was, so I essentially on my own got the senior partners in IBM together with the Salesforce people and the Blue Wolf executives and for go to market and for responding to opportunities and things like that and, and I even reached out to find a delivery organization and kind of coordinate training and enablement for them. So. Good, good, good. And that's what you see what he did. He, no, and he pulled the key stakeholders, that's what you did, yeah. in place and made something happen. You were proactive, that's right. what you did. You saw you saw a missing link and you were brought that proactive about getting it done. The next one is personal. And, and I want to talk about this before, I'm going to set the stage with this one. Because when we talk about being an influencer and connecting in the workplace, in the community or within an organization, your personal life comes into play. Because what's going on at home? Oh, you want to go? I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. No, I want you. I want you to go ahead. That relates to personally. Okay. Yeah, but personally, sorry about mischief. But anyway, uh, but personally, sometimes that lifestyle comes into play. So be cognizant. I don't really want nobody to go in and tell me how you influence her in your personal life. But at the same time, but I want you to realize it does have a place with what you're doing in the workplace. So if you're going through a bad day, you're going through some problems at home, and you, you may feel like your influence is declining somewhat, don't bring it to work. Don't, don't, don't take it there. They, people don't, we don't need that. Because the one thing as a leader, you're an influencer, but you need to be on your game day, every day, every second of the day, okay? Now I want to, why don't you go to your question, please. Okay, so 
professional. This is kind of between professionally and personally. Right. So, uh, like I said before, um, I'm a program associate for the Office of International Studies. So I'm still in college. So I'm like an intern type of thing. So like connecting with my supervisors and people who are older than me and have their PhDs and stuff and figuring out like, okay, how can I get to this point? What did you do? And what are these things that you study and stuff like that to figure out how to move to the next level? And then personally, um, again, like uh, just balancing between like being this college student and like becoming an upperclassman and then figuring out what's next. Like, so I'm somewhere in between that right now. I love her answer, guys. And I'm not going to stay here too long because we're about to do some of the presentation. I'm not going to let you steal it. <laughs> but nonetheless, you great answer. The next one is in the community. What are you doing as an influencer, as a leader in your community and connecting? Anyone have anything on that? I think you mentioned something about what you do in the community. You mentioned something as well, how you're doing that. So I think we covered that nicely. Anyone else that want to share? Go ahead. On the, on the HOA board, so there's a lot of community interaction there. Yes. <laughs> and and <laughs> take to it. I'm going to go to Maria first. Maria? I volunteered at the Commonwealth Attorney in Virginia for 16 months. All right. And made a difference. Can you expand upon that? When you said you made a difference, what you mean specifically? Uh, like my, this, the Commonwealth Attorney said, we, in this office, we never have enough time for all the, to do all the work we've done. We have to do in this office. And with Maria, it made a difference. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. I know you want to have something great to say. Go ahead. In our townhouse court, uh, uh, organized a, a potluck, um, you know, in the summer. And there, there's a whole neighborhood potluck down by the little pool that we have. But it was nice on our court. There's a lot of immigrant families and uh, people are busy with schedules and um, um, they're not meeting each other necessarily unless they have kids in school. So I had some really delicious food from like El Salvador and, and uh, Spain and so on. Um, you know, people really enjoyed providing a spread and all I did was pass out a little flyer. Wow. And then people were thanking me afterwards. So I had to memorize some new names. <laughs> so, so with Steve, you heard what Steve said. So connecting sometimes don't have to be a lot of work. What you do? You pass out a flyer? That was it. Well, <laughs> so people it. plugged into that, bless you. People plugged into his event because he had something they offered that would resonate with them, so they plugged into it. And it was successful, right? Yes. Great job. No, not, not everybody participated, but it, everybody saw it. That's it. Yeah. The next one is here is, uh, what do you do, this is another question, I'm going to get some ideas from you guys. What do you do when everyone you are leading or speaking to has different values, beliefs, and ideas? What do you do? All right, go ahead. I make I statements, not you should consider this, but this is what I believe, um, what are your views on that? I, I am interested in hearing someone else's views, and when I give my own views, I I keep it personal and don't try to shove those beliefs onto somebody else. Okay. okay. Someone else, go ahead. I understand that uh, the Prime Minister of Germany, Angela Merkel, asks everybody to speak and give their opinions before she mentions anything herself. Mm -hmm. And she's in charge of the fourth largest economy in the world. And that's her style of working with people with different values and different opinions and remembering everybody has their own agenda yes. in any situation. All right, thank you for that. Lynn? Yeah, I wanted to make a comment about, this is one of my favorite stories. I got my master's degree in special education at George Washington University. And they made, us, they made us take a whole semester class called Working with Parents of Children with Special Needs. And my thought was, you know, you just be polite and, 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 and um, you know, empathetic and, uh, and be respectful and, you know, why, why are we going to take a whole semester? Let's <laughs> plan for a whole semester. Well, uh, they made us read, you know, pick a book to read. I read a book 
that uh, came from a support group of women who met to support each other because they all had special needs children. And once I read that book and saw what the uh, what was at stake, culturally speaking, some cultures believe that if you have a special needs child, you've committed a sin against God, and this is your punishment. Um, there's a lot of shame, there's a lot of guilt attached to having a child with special needs, you must have done something wrong. And once that semester was over, I really understood the gravity of cultural perspectives with that and how incredibly careful <coughs> and sensitive I have to be when I'm speaking to a parent about their child and and recognizing those cultural differences. So to that, um, my training and education showed me the importance of being incredibly careful in my communication. You know, it's, it's beyond stepping on people's toes. You, you really have to know something about their culture or their values to, uh, to be influential mm -hmm. in that situation. I would like to know, just a follow-up question for me, you know, what kind of strategies did you use in order to build that connection, but even what they talk? Say, ask me that in a different way, say it one more time. Well, ask me we're, looking at, we're looking at values, beliefs, and, and you know, difference. I'm, I'm trying to find out from you, based on the school training that you received, what, what suggestions they give you in regards to how to you know, build that connection with folks? Oh, I can tell you it's kind of it's a, 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 a learn as you go experience. Oh, really? Uh, yes, for instance, I had a, a student who Someone, uh, one of the team members said, I think he needs to go to like a, a, a what do you call it, a boot, a boot camp for kids. It's really a kitty jail. <laughs> so his grandmother was his guardian. So I very politely and nicely, you know, recommended as an expert professional that uh, she send him to uh, this boys camp. And she said, absolutely not. And basically hung up the phone on me. And I was like, dang, I'm just trying to, you know, help things out. Well, because of that class that I had, I realized that his uh, behavior had become progressively worse. He was stealing things. He started with stealing candy from the early childhood area, and it ended up stealing a bike. So his negative behaviors were becoming more progressive. And I realized after having taken that class, she was scared of him. And she had good reason to be scared of him. And so she didn't want to be, I figured this all out on my own, she didn't want to be the one that he could look back and say, if it wasn't for you, yes. I would have gone to kitty jail or whatever. She didn't want to be that person because, like I said, his negative behaviors had become worse and she was afraid of him. So it made me sensitive to not press her out about it, okay. to not even go down that road again. She's doing what she has to do to survive. She's doing her best she can with this uh, child that has needs. Yes. And um, everybody has to survive. She has to survive. She's doing her best to be the guardian of the child. <laughs> People at school have to survive. And like I said, it, it required a lot of careful understanding yes, yes. of her perspective. But that happened the first year I was a teacher. So I had to pull back and say, well, hey, why she hang up on me? Not take it personally and understand she has a right to be afraid okay, okay. Of, of this kid. And we, we do the best we can around that. Okay, so I'm not going to make that recommendation. I'm just going to keep delivering services, you know, at the, at the school for him. And we're going to all continue to try to be a good example for him to follow okay. and not go in that other direction. But so my training was very necessary. Thank, uh, thank you for elaborating on that. There's a lot of nuances that unknown that, that, that goes on with that for you to make an informed decision. So thank you for elaborating. Okay, question. Yes. I just wanted to, uh, one of the things I've found is when there's a group that seems to be quite different in the, their backgrounds and their understanding things, if you get enough interaction, you can get to the point where you start seeing there are actually common concerns and and actually probably find there are m many more areas of agreement than you would initially have thought of, thought were existed. <laughs> uh, Ron, I wish I had one of my pens on me. <laughs> That's the key. That's the key, guys. Ron hit it right on the head. You have to find common ground. Mm -hmm. That's that's the foundation of that. We have different values, beliefs, and such. You have to find common ground. Leadership is all about others, and so is connected. You have to remove yourself from everything. If you really want to connect with someone, you really want to communicate and have an effective communication. Think about, when I spoke to everyone today, I didn't say anything about myself, did I? 
for those I spoke to today. But I asked about you. I want to know about you. I want to know what you are doing. I want to know where are you planning to go? What are some of your goals? Because we're building a connection. That was key. Now, how are you making people feel valued while connected? First, we're going to look at one-to-one. One-to-one. -one. When you meet somebody one-to-one, -one, how do you think you can make them feel valued? Listen to them. Compliment. We had a compliment. One more. Look at them right in the eye. Woo! Like you're doing me. You've been doing me all day. Okay. I'll repeat back to them something of what they said. We yeah. heard that yet? Yeah. I was going to say eye contact. Okay. Go ahead. Ask them about their day. Ask them about their day. Okay. And for me, just something simple like talking to them. I had a brief instance on the metro this morning that, you know, just tourists trying to make their way around figuring out the blue line versus the yellow line. And I just took the time. They just looked confused and lost and everybody else was ignoring them. And I took the time to approach them, ask them where they were looking to go. And, uh, you know, and I, and I looked it up and I told them, you know, exactly what they needed to do. And they were just so appreciative that mm -hmm. I took the time. Thank you so much. The next one is, how are you making people feel valued in a group while connecting? Now we're in a group. How would you do that? Go ahead. I think open and honest communication within a group. And I think what you had stated about um, the German Prime Minister, like letting people say what they need to say, and then you say what you need to say. So like just hearing what everyone has to say and listening to understand is important. Mm -hmm. Good, good job. Being open to everyone's ideas and realizing that there is not one right way to do something. Um, if a group of people can come together and one person has an idea and then someone else builds on that idea and then somebody else builds on that idea, everyone feels valued because it becomes a group effort that we can all take pride in. Great answer. Any other? Go ahead. I was saying more basic level is don't don't dominate the conversation, but give them a chance to yeah. speak up. Any other questions? Well, what I'm hearing here, here out of the bonus of adult learning, <coughs> I realize that in a group, especially like this, you may have people who know more about the topic than you. So you're basically you know, a facilitator. You're just drawing out information and some big ball so something can take away from it, something useful. So, great. Um, I heard spoken a couple of weeks ago to be flexible and be able to step forward or step back. But depending on the conversation, if, if everybody's being quiet and stuff, it's sometimes helpful, you know, for me to take the initiative and say something. But if everybody's talking over everybody else, yeah. there's something valuable about just being the one in the room who's <laughs> listening, receiving. Yeah. Okay. Go right here. Go ahead. Um, definitely listening to everyone, and, and your statement is very profound. I'd like to know how does that fold into being an introvert to an extrovert? Because I've been hearing, I'm going to be open and this and that. But there are people, and I'm going to speak for myself, really, where I am an introvert. And when you're in me, you know, because somebody can tag you and think that you're not a participant or you're quiet. You know, but and, and you want to be about in a part where you actually kind of need to. But it's not that you you know want to add value or be a part of or a group or don't want to share something. One example, maybe very simple, but how's your weekend? Fine. Um, and it's not like fine, but it's great. Without going into detail. People perceive that to be, oh my gosh, really, really bad. Because they feel that you owe them some type of explanation to me about what you did. So that's why I think that is so important because I'm really true to introvert and extrovert people and understanding. 
have your answer when it's further in the slot. I'll keep your answer. If you don't mind. No, I appreciate it. I didn't know whether but, I got but it. I'm glad you, I'm glad, but I'm glad. Yeah. You, and I want to get your ideas. I want to get your, com your comments so we can discuss these things openly and honestly. To kind of expand on what you're saying about the introvert versus extrovert, some people just are not comfortable talking about themselves. I'm one of those types because I'm a classic introvert. But some people are like, they just can't shut up. That's just true. Yeah. So. Great, great, great. Um, I'm an introvert, and back to one on one, um, I can't remember people's names. Um, I don't do it on purpose. I just can't remember people's names. So when I go for an interview and everybody introduces themselves or gives me their card, I have to write down their names and, and look at it because I forget. Um, I can tell you what they wore, I can tell you what they said, I can tell you what they said 20 years after they said it, but I can't, I can't remember their names. And so what, what do I do in that situation? Because people feel valued when you look them in the eye and tell them, hello, Susan, you know, and I can't do that. Well, there's ways of doing that. There's ways of being intentional about doing that. And one of them, when we did the ball, we were throwing around the ball, remember that? And a couple of you landed on what? Take notes. Connecting is key. And I, and I don't want to get too much into because we're going to the next slide. will tell you a lot about that. I went on one um, interview at a governmental agency at which point there was a panel of people who were interviewing me, specifically 12 people. I drew a diagram of the table on a piece of paper and then put everybody's uh, name next to the seat. Yep. Did you stop stealing my presentation? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That, that was a great illustration of that. Thank you so much. And, I, and we're going to get into some of these individuals. Now, as a team, how are you connected? How you making people feel valued as a team? Okay, we'll go get into it. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I, you know, if your team is working on something where, like, there's measurements of you moved, it, you moved the ball from here to here, or we didn't move the ball, but here's what we learned, and here's how we're going to to make improvements. I think you know the leader can help to draw attention to those things and get people, you know, excited about how we yes, did that yes. and what more can we do. Thank you, Chris. The next one in a partnership, working together collaboratively. And we don't need nothing on that one. The next one here, okay, now, now I'm going to talk because I want to give you some actionable items, add value to you in regards to some of things. So when we talk about one-to-one, -one, how to make people feel valued, some of you said of it, eye contact. When you look at someone in the eye, they feel valued. Also, not only just eye contact, but you listen. Did you guys say listen? Yeah. You listen. But I'm going to go deeper than listening. It's more than just listening. You have to hear what they're saying. Because I can listen to you all day. But if I'm not hearing you and understanding what you're saying to me, I'm going to miss the point. I'm going to miss it. So you have to listen to them. And I want another suggestion is, I want you guys to write these things down. Another suggestion is, have your phone off. Don't have it on silent. Don't have it on bus. Cut your phone off. <coughs> if you want someone to feel valued, you want to build that connection, you need to be really focused on that individual, have a conversation. When I spoke to each and every one of you, I looked you straight in your eye with an honest, happy face, of course. But at the same time, I'm listening to you intently because I want to know about you. I want to learn about you. And also, when we talk about connecting one-on-one, -on -one, I know you mentioned something about, you know, how can, you know, if you're an introvert, you got to get beyond yourself. Even if you're an introvert or extrovert, there's certain skills, and we're going to talk a little more about this, that you're, you're going to learn. You just have to learn these skills in order to be to advance in the workplace. Okay? You have to get yourself out of that shell that you're in, even if, just, even, even if it's for a moment. You have to do that in order to advance yourself. Look beyond yourself. Stretch yourself. Well, I get this training called 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. We talked about it. And one of the laws of the 15 invaluable laws of growth is the law of the rubber band. And the rubber band is, you know what the rubber band is, right? I can throw it around my finger. It's pretty useless, isn't it? But when is the rubber band useful? When it expands. When you stretch it. When you stretch yourself, you will grow yourself. When you pull that rubber band, you can use it for all different types of things. 
And it's going to be tension because you have to do something that's beyond yourself. But at the same time, you're growing yourself by doing that. All right? I hope that helped a little bit. I, I understand that side, but it's a but. But I also tend to feel, it, yeah, you do have to grow yourself. But how much, sometimes something is just innately you, and it does not need to be changed. This is who I am. This is where I like to be. This is what works well. Good. We understand the stretching, and but when does it come down to not being yourself? Okay. And I mean, that just that, that touches in so many different okay. areas. I'm gonna do a role play, just real quick, just a quick role play, so you guys can get understand what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do it with you. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> okay. 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 I, who who wanna do a role no, no, play? I don't with? care. I okay. Don't care. Hi, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing great. Opening the answer. I'm not do that was closed, right? This one word answer. It's sunny outside. How are you? Is it sunny outside? It's sunny outside. Okay. Another one word answer, okay? Now this is connecting. We're gonna do connecting now. That's just straight up asking a question. And this is easy to do. Hi, how are you, Ty? I'm good. How are you doing? My name is, I'm doing well. My name is Kevin M. Coleman, and I want to ask you one question. Could you tell me three things that make you feel great today? <laughs> you want me to ask? Oh, you, what do you want me to do? Can you, you tell me three things that make you feel great today? Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Oh, okay. There's a question. Uh, all right. <laughs> I said early, I think, what, we're so, so um, okay. exciting. Exciting. Um, passionate. Oh, passionate. Resourceful, exciting, and passionate. So what we can do now, when I ask those three questions, when I ask that question that was open-ended, we had to give me answers, now I can look at resourcefulness. I can ask a follow-up question about resourcefulness. I can ask a follow-up question about your neck. It's all about communicating and connecting. Because I'm listening to you, I'm hearing what you're saying, and then I'm following up with additional questions to keep the communication going. It's so much. It's, it's, and then not to just hold up. Can but I, can but I let, me, let me just let me just, just, she was yeah, let me just so, wait, 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 and the reason why I just wanted to say that because sometimes the environment the, the response may be oh, why do I die? just not like <laughs> open to I mean honestly I'm not yeah. being but people please un, I mean yeah. members please understand not everybody is gregarious like yeah. that but we're not mean we're not yeah. we're just we're, com we're just there we want to be a part of but Perfect. Who do you want to say something? Yes. So the first thing I wanted to say is speakers are uh, I mean, a requirement of you is to teach to all learning styles. So as an instructor, and you did that with the ball. That was uh, a kinesthetic type of learning yes, style, mm -hmm. and it was able. You were able to participate easily because it was for everyone. Everyone was doing it, so it didn't make you come out of your comfort zone. I think what I'm hearing you say, speaking to how much authenticity can I maintain of myself in a certain place without being dragged out of my authenticity to be something else. And what I've learned here 40 plus through all these workshops that I'm going to is knowing the culture of the workplace you're in. And then my, uh, my opinion would be that come up with some scripted, come up with some scripted. <laughs> because when you asked her three things uh, about why does she feel great today, you could have said, I'm alive, That's I'm breathing, That's I can walk on two legs, and you really yes. haven't given any personal information about yourself yes. to the other person. So you've been able to answer their question with good answers, but stay in your comfort zone and really not revealing anything and being too personal. And, and so I think that knowing the culture where you end, because I struggle with that too, I don't want to talk about my personal life at work. I really don't. And the millennials that I'm working with very much want to talk about their personal Millennials, y'all back there, they really want to talk about their personal life. I'm like, let's stay, keep it professional, let's talk about it at work. And I mean, the girls literally come in and talk about her boys and whatever. Ah, I don't want to hear it. So that's kind of a tricky, yeah. it's the culture of the environment. I'm glad you said that's a perfect example. I'm going to go back to that. Go ahead. I think it's also important as a leader to recognize that, for instance, if you're having a meeting of ideas with the whole team, I'm not going to single them out yeah. mm -hmm. and say, what do you think? Yeah. Um, but I may. You have to know them. 
Yeah. I may leaving the room try to make it a point to be walking out next to them and start chatting with them about the meeting mm -hmm. to get their ideas that way. I mean, I think it's really important as a leader to recognize that we have different Members, people. Yeah, different people, different mm -hmm. personalities. We've talked about it before. Yeah. And, and, and it is great. Do you want to have a question? Go ahead. Just one. Um, it's more of a good statement of even though I'm sitting back here listening, you would never guess I'm an extreme extrovert mm -hmm. off the chart, but you would never know because I had to learn the environment of professional, being in a professional environment, turning it off when I'm in my workplace, and then when I'm in an environment where I can't turn it on, it, it's 100% it's let's go. But then I had to learn how to do that. And the opposite is for my wife, she's an extreme introvert, but she knows how to flip it. And you would think that she was an extrovert, but it's the like total opposite. Mm -hmm. and I'm so glad you That's said good. that because yeah. myself personally, I can relate to. You wouldn't think I'm an would anybody think I'm an introvert? I'm right there in the middle. I'm I'm right there in the middle. I'm literally in the middle. But I stretch myself and push myself to have those conversations. I know perfect example of it is we ask questions. A lot of times within certain communities, people think that if you ask questions, you're being nosy. Is this is some of what you're talking about, man. Why are you in my business? But at the same time, you want to connect with people. You want to build a relationship with people. You have to look beyond yourself and ask certain questions of people to learn about them. It's all about growing and learning with each other. So just try to open yourself up to try to do that in different scenarios and know what? The culture. The next one is, how are you making people feel valued while connecting in the group? And let me give you a perfect example of that. Now, I guess I was speaking a little more. The way you do it is the same way we did it today. When you came in, I made sure I was here early so I could meet everyone. I didn't get a chance to meet everyone, but I, I tried to meet everyone, have my own individual conversation with them, even if it was short, even with just hello and things of that nature, and I could kind of judge who wanted to talk more and who didn't want to speak more. And that's how I build your connection. You meet with early. You come in early to meeting early. You come into, if you have an interview, you come early to the interview. Have a short conversation. They get to know you before you sit down. They have that time to really get to know you better and understand where you're coming from. No, they, they can pick up on different signals, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. They can pick up on these different things if they're skilled. The next one is how you make people feel you as a team. I love what you said, Chris. You said something great about you have to look at the things. Where can you add value within that team? If you're working on a certain project, if you see something, a skill set that you can add value to, Take yourself, jump out the box. Look, see what you can do, how you can plug in to make that successful. And here we go, team, we're going back to team again. When you look at team, look at productivity, you look at effort. As a team, the linear line, that's just you, you know, on your own, you're trying to do, you're trying to get things going, and, and you may get, I'm giving you a perfect example. I was a leader of an organization of 100 people, over 100 actually. And I was, I feel I was a great leader. I mean, everybody told me, Kevin, you are fantastic. And I thought I was too. However, I wasn't getting that synergy going. Because guess what? I was leading. I was just doing, I was getting things done, any means necessary. And everybody was, had accolades and all the rest. However, when I learned how the real, true, exponential work, where you get people, where you really build that connection with individuals, meet them where they at, versus to say, I'm the leader and come on, follow me. That's when I saw results. That's when we looked at the productivity go up. And that's exactly like this illustration. You have to build that synergy. You have to build that relationship with individuals in order to get them to understand where you're coming from, what is the goal, what is the mission, and how we're going to get there together. And how you can play an important, integral part in us getting there. And again, right here we're talking about connectors realize that they can do anything with at least get about 10% of the individuals they work with going to take the exponential and synergistic results to a higher height. And this is somebody was talking about the skill. And this slide here tells you connecting is more a skill than a natural talent. So when we talk about connecting, that's why I was talking about stretching yourself. It's something you have to learn. It's not something that's innate in you. It, it's innate in me. I can, I can speak to individuals. Like I said, I'm right there on the borderline. My wife wouldn't say it. She's saying I'm an extrovert all the time. I know how I feel, because you know yourself, right? You know how you feel. You know how you, I know I'm an introvert. I know I need time alone to you know, gather my thoughts and you know, really get myself out there. Now I'm out there, I'm ready. So 
some extroverts, they don't need that. They just want to be around people. They're ready, always, <laughs> like you. <laughs> so, so, so it is a, something you have to learn. It's something you have to learn. You have to stretch yourself in order to get there. Remember more. What I say about more, guys? Say it with enthusiasm. Remember more is required. Remember more, you can do more. Just have your mindset on that. All speakers were bad speakers at first. John D. Rockefeller. Five connectors, four or five factors for connected. First one is relationships. Think about it. I want you guys to write these things down because it's really important. This is one of the most important slides. It's relationships. We talk about factors. If you see someone that has great relationships, you see Ken meeting with individuals that you think you need to that may value you, may help you out in your progression, make sure you connect it. Next one is insight. If someone knows something you don't know, and you want to know about that to get you to the next level, make sure you connect that individual to their insight. The next one is success. If you see someone that is successful, and they're doing things at a high level, and you say, okay, I want to plug into that. That's something I'm really interested in. You need to connect with that person because of success. And this is why I like to use Michael Jordan, ability. Michael Jordan, what is Michael, he's a billionaire now, but what is the one organization that he, he's connected with? Basketball. Basketball, but it's an organization that invests a lot of money in him. Nike. 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 And they only did it because of his ability. ability. And the last one is sacrifice. And this is something I was gonna to talk to Steve about, so I'm gonna pull him into this early on. Sacrifice. I know some of you do a lot of missions things, you do things within the community. Sometimes you have to look at sacrifice. What are you doing in the community? You see someone doing something in the community, connect with that individual. That's something that's really innate in you that you want to get involved with. There may be no single thing more important in efforts or meaningful work and fulfilling relationships than to participate in the art of communication. Influence is not about impressing people, it's about connecting with them. And I like to add something else to that. It's not about impressing people, but it's about impressing upon people the art of communication and connecting, okay? What you see here, everybody see that black arm? And the two faces. And the two faces. And the point in this illustration is, it don't make a difference what's in there. It doesn't make a difference what's in there. Who saw the black arm? Who saw the two faces? Who saw them both? <laughs> All right. So, so the point is, it doesn't make a difference, guys. We all can find something on common ground that we can connect with, and we can come together and really, you know, have the same mindset. I'm gonna ask Camila and Glenn, I want you guys to pass out some cards to everyone in the room. Common ground is the point where everyone's needs, beliefs, and values intersect. Yes, ma'am. Common ground is the point where everyone needs, beliefs, and values intersect. We talked about that. We talked about needs. We talked about beliefs. We talked about uh, values today. So I want you guys to be mindful of that as you move forward in your professional career development. I'm asking my children to go around and pass out these cards for a reason. What I'm offering here is a free one hour. Yeah, wait. Question. Yes, ma'am. That's what you recommended. Yes, I do. Does that have everything that you're giving? Oh, it has more. Just this book. That's I'm about to talk about that, Maria, Miss Maria. What, what, I'm, what we're offering, what I'm offering you guys today, is a one-hour complimentary coaching session. Where we will be co you'll be coached on whatever you whatever topic you would like. You just got to fill out the card and give it to me. Or you have a choice. And then the business part, just write in a coaching or if you want this other one. The other offer I'm giving you is an online complimentary training on, this is a five week training, one hour per week. But we'll go over this book in detail every week. But the only thing I ask, since I'm doing it complimentary, I normally charge a lot of money for this. So what I'm doing, since I'm doing the complimentary, I need you guys to buy the book and also make sure you come. Because I'll come in time to you, okay? Anybody want to do that? Let's take a bow. The next one is, to recap, we have three key points. Can anyone think of the three key points you want to recap today? What have you been hearing a lot about? Influencing. Ah. Leadership. 
Connect and increase your influence in every situation. Influence is what? Leadership. That's it. Connecting is a more a skill than a natural talent. And the last one is this. Connecting is a powerful is powerful when you first find what? Common ground. Oh, I'm sorry, you want to go here? Those are the three key principles I want you to get for, as a takeaway for today. Again, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank Ken. And I, I, I would really love your participation. You guys have a great day. Thank you, thank you so much. We really appreciate it on behalf of 40 Plus. Oh, thank you so much. To keep us in yes. your mind each morning with that coffee and other things. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you all. All right, so free the, uh, we're going to do a little drawing. Um, so we have another gift from a speaker and a friend of 40 Plus. Uh, we all know in today's world there's an app for everything. There's an app for your job search, your resumes, dating, whatever, finances, whatever. 